Okay, so the first thing we have to do here is find the value of x. Now, if you take a look, we should see x. In this expression, it says 5x. In this expression, it says 7x minus 20. Now, what we should notice is these two expressions are wedged in these two angles right here. And these two angles happen to be vertical angles, which we should know are congruent to each other, which means they have identical angle measures. So what we're going to do to figure out what x is, is we're going to take this expression, 5x, and set it equal to this expression, 7x minus 20. Because we know those two angles are equal, we simply set those two expressions equal to each other. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to get x on one side, all right, all of our x terms on one side and all of our constants on one side. So if I take this 7x, which is positive, and move it on the other side, that would be negative 7x. And I'm going to combine it with this positive 5x. Now, our coefficients here, when we have a negative one and a positive one, we have more negatives. So we're going to write negative 2x equals, and on this side we have minus 20 left, or we just write it as negative 20. And now to get our x by itself, we divide both sides by the coefficient of negative 2. So that's going to leave us with x equals negative 20 divided by negative 2, which is positive 10. So x is equal to positive 10. Now we're going to use this to answer other questions. So the next question is asking us to find the measure of angle CAG. Well, here's C, here's A, and here's G. So CAG is this obtuse angle right here. We're trying to find that measure. Now, before we can find that measure, we have to find the measure of either this acute angle or this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 we found for x and plug it in for x into this expression right here, 5x. And we know that 5 times 10, so I replace that x with 10, 5 times 10 is 50. So this angle right here is 50. And the one adjacent to it is going to be supplementary with this 50 degree angle because they form this straight angle. Because this angle and this angle have a total sum of 180 degrees. So what we do is we take 180 and we subtract 50 from that and that leaves us with 130 degrees. So that is the measure of CAG. It's equal to 130 degrees. All right, now we have to find the measure of CAT. Well, I actually just found the measure of CAT, which is right here. All we did is plug 10 in for x, and 5x is 50. So that's 50 degrees. Now, if we were asked to find the measure of angle GAD, which is this acute angle over here, it would also be 50 degrees because it is vertical with this one over here. All right, let's go to the next problem. Okay, so in this figure right here, we should see that lines A and B are parallel to each other, and we have this transversal right here. And first, we have to find the value of x. So what we got to do is look at the relationship between this expression and this expression and where they sit in this figure. So this right here, 3x plus 16, is representing this angle right here, and this expression is wedged in this angle right here. Now, if we look at the relationship of those two angles, we can see that they're both on the inside of the parallel line, so we know they're interior angles, and they're on alternate sides, so we would say that those angles are alternate interior angles. And when you have alternate interior angles, here's what we should remember. Those angles are going to be congruent to each other. They are equal to each other. They have the same angle measure, okay? So don't make the mistake of taking these expressions, adding them and setting them equal to 180. That is not true in this case, all right? Because if you take a look, think about it, both of these angles are obtuse, which means they're both greater than 90. And if they're both greater than 90, that means they're going to have a sum that's greater than 180. So they're not supplementary, all right? So to find x, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two expressions and set them equal to each other. So we're going to take 5x minus 54 and set it equal to 3x plus 16. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 3x here and move it to the other side of our equation by writing 5x, so we leave 5x over here, and I write 3x as minus 3x equals, and I take this constant and I leave it alone because I wanna put my constants on the right side, and I take this constant, minus 54, and move it on the other side as plus 54. So basically we moved all of our x terms on the left and we have all of our constants on the right. So now we're gonna take these x terms, 5x minus 3x and write 2x because that's what five minus three is and set it equal to 16 plus 54 and that's gonna be equal to 70. All right, now we have to figure out what x is equal to by getting rid of this coefficient here. So we're gonna divide both sides by this coefficient of two. And 70 divided by two is 35. So now we know that x is equal to 35. All right, now we have to use this information to figure out the measure of angle W. And angle W is right here. Now if we take a look, angle W is vertical to this angle right here. They have the same angle measure. So if we know the angle measure of this angle right here, then we know the measure of angle W. And we know what X is equal to is 35. So we're gonna take this expression right here. We're gonna take three, and instead of X, we're gonna substitute X with 35. So we have three times 35 plus 16. And all we have to do is solve this expression, and that is gonna be the measure of angle W. All right, so we're gonna do three times 35, and doing a little mental math, that's gonna be 105 degrees, and then we're gonna add 16 to that. And 105 plus 16 is equal to 121 degrees. That is the measure of angle W. Now one thing we need to remember is, when you're being asked to find the value of X, most of the time, that's not an angle measure, it's just what X is equal to. But once you plug X into one of these expressions, it's gonna give us what the actual angle measure is, okay? So there's a difference between the questions, what is the value of X and what is the measure of some angle, okay? That's why I labeled this answer here with the degree symbol, and this was just 35, because that's not 35 degrees, it's just 35. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, we have to select all true statements here, all right? Now, so the first statement says vertical angles are congruent. That's true, we are, we are gonna select that choice because we know that whenever you have intersecting lines that the angles formed on opposite sides are going to be identical in angle measure. So this angle here and this angle here are equal to each other. All right, now the next statement reads same side interior angles are congruent. Now, if you're not sure if they're congruent or not, what you do is you go ahead and you just kind of construct a little diagram by just drawing two parallel lines, and you can do that right now um, because it's easier to visually see it, and then just draw any transversal going across those parallel lines, and then identify what same side interior angles are. Well, so I'm gonna go on the inside of the parallel lines, but go on the same side of this transversal. So this is an example of same side interior. Now, if you take a look, we can see that this angle right here is obtuse, which is greater than 90, and this one is acute, it is less than 90. Therefore, they are not equal in angle measure. They are not congruent, so this is actually a false statement. We should not select that choice because that is false. All right, now we can use the same diagram to See if this is a true statement or not. So it says alternate side interior angles have a sum of 180. Well, let's take a look here. We're talking about interior angles, so I'm just gonna use this angle that we used in the last statement. And then we're gonna go on the alternate side of the transversal and keep it on the interior. So these are alternate interior angles. Now, we can see that they're both acute. 
they are both less than 90 degrees. And because they're less than 90 degrees, we know that if we add them together, they're gonna to be less than 180. So this is also a false statement. Alternate side interior angles are actually congruent to each other. They are equal to each other. So we're gonna get rid of this statement right here, okay? And now we have one more statement. Same side exterior angles have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So what we're gonna do is look at this transversal and we're gonna make two angles that are on the same side of that transversal, but on the exterior of the parallel lines. So I'm gonna make an angle right here that's on the outside of the parallel lines and I have to stay on the same side as this angle. So I'm gonna stay right here. So if we take a look at these angles that I just created here, all right, we can see that this is an acute angle and this is an obtuse angle, so they're definitely not congruent. However, they do have a sum of 180 degrees, okay? They have a sum of 180 degrees. But one reason we know that is because if we take a look here, this angle down here corresponds to this angle. And we, can, and we know that corresponding angles are congruent to each other. And if we slide this angle over here to where it corresponds, we can see that we have half of a circle right here or a straight angle because these two angles sit right on a straight line there. So we know the sum is 180 degrees. So these are the two true statements out of the four.